What's the story, everyone? Welcome back to Gaelic Games Fan TV. How are we all getting on? Myself and John McMahon are here to preview the cabin footballers for 2024. First of all, Happy New Year to anyone who uh, regularly watches this channel or tunes in to any videos, any content we, uh, we we do over here. Very much appreciate all the support that we got last year and hopefully 2024 can be uh, just as good in terms of the channel and also just as good in terms of the, the football and the action and uh, and everything else. And yeah, this is going to be the, the first of our season previews for 2024. Obviously, done a few of them towards the back end of uh, of last year, but certainly be ramping things up now ahead of the uh, National Football League. Plenty more videos and uh, and everything else on the way. John, first of all, how's life? How's things? Happy New Year. How was your Christmas? And uh, we were saying off air, dry January, I think, is very much uh, you know in the in the melting pot now, the boiling pot, maybe I should say. Aaron, the boiling pot. It feels like the boiling pot. Aaron, it is great to be on the show again, my man. Thanks very much for the invite. It's always a pleasure to see you. It's always a good pleasure to get chatting to you, and I'm delighted to be on tonight. And a very happy new year, new year to yourself and the followers and everyone watching in. Hope everyone has a great year and a successful year for all your kind going forward um good christmas my man yeah can't complain nice and quiet um not 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 too strenuous two pints a couple of nights and a few movies cracked open about 20 tubs of sweets in the usual crack so i think january getting back to football now in a couple of weeks time will really be helpful now just to try to get the body back in some sort of shape but um i was enjoyable it was quiet um you know just just st standard really christmas I suppose when you probably the, the, the whole the whole meaning of christmas with the presence of its bob i think when you get into your late 20s which unfortunately i, <laughs> I am now uh it kind of i suppose the art of christmas kind of kind of falls falls a bit it's probably more about the kids and bits of bobs now but um, no, all good, my man. And sure, glad, glad you're in good form as well. But yeah, dry January, not sure, big man. It's a long month. I think there'll be a few points <laughs> squeezing, uh, squeezing some of these weekends coming up. Yeah, and no, it's funny. One of my mates there was talking about the Dublin Offaly game on on Saturday there as well. That's in uh, Gracefield. I'm gonna be honest, I've no idea where the, where the fuck that is, to be honest with you. I know it's probably, I, 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 I had the clue, but when, 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 yeah, I know, but when I see. We've seen that game was for Gracefield. I thought it'd be in Parnell Park. God, Gracefield, no idea, no idea. But if it, if there's someone watching in, if you could tell us where Gracefield is, sounds like it's in America. Yeah, yeah. But look, uh, sure. Look, it might be a bit of crack. Might be a bit of fun. Were you at the the Cavan game last night against Derry? I went to the Cavan game. Yeah, and to be honest with you, I was. I think I said this on Twitter. Yes, I was just delighted to have the counties up back. Um, it was a good game. Like I suppose the first half, it was we'll touch down the cabin footballers now in a few minutes, but it was kind of it was a, a kind of a proper mechanic cup kind of football. Obviously both teams not showing their hands, giving lads runs, uh, giving lads their debuts, which was obviously great to see. Ray McGalligan's first game in charge. Went into it. I think people were just really glad to get back to a game of ball. It was for it was Calvin's first game since last June. So that was definitely a long, long break. Um, obviously not having the run in Total Cup we wanted. So it was a long, kind of long, long spell without county football. Obviously, the club football kind of took took its uh, took its place. But um, yeah, no, went into it. Not a, definitely not a game for the ages. McKenna Cup, hard to read in much to it. Like, you know, I think Derry were probably were happy enough. Mickey Hart's first game in charge of Derry as well. Um, but no, look at it. Again, I wouldn't probably worry too much about it. But it was, I think I said, like, you know, Ray Galligan, he's probably feeling, fulfilling a dream now. The fact he's the Calvin manager now, I think he'll be, he'll be, he'll be really looking forward to the year ahead now. Um, but yeah, again, I think people are about to get out of the house and just maybe socialize and just, you know, get away from all the drink and chocolate and whatever you're having yourself. Yeah, like preseason competitions. To be fair, like they definitely do generate a lot of um, a lot of good numbers, and I know a lot of the uh, I know in the O'Burn Cup anyway, a lot of the the money and the ticket sales and everything goes to the players' fund. So I suppose it probably is a a good reason to to back your team. In fairness, Rory says here, how are you? How's things, Rory? Hope you uh, Rory, how are you? Hope you Happy a, New Year. Good New Year. Gavin says I was just there to see Mickey and Redmond. To be honest, yeah, maybe so, maybe so, maybe mm -hmm. Mickey Hart's return is. It's definitely, a, I think that's definitely why the cameras were there anyway. Uh, everyone is overhyping <laughs> uh, Raymond Galligan, he's too, uh, he's too inexperienced. Oh God. Here we go. Yeah. I mean, there we go. Good start. We haven't even started yet. <laughs> no, yeah, we're in the, in the, let's try and keep things a little bit, uh, a little bit positive, a little bit positive here. But I suppose, firstly, maybe like Mickey Graham leaving last keep, year, was that the Roy? Things positive, Roy call, Roy call, do you think? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I think the line went to dodge there for a secondary. Oh. Um, Mickey Graham, I think, in fairness, when the, when the news did break about um, Mickey, Mickey, can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you good now. I can hear you good. Yeah, it was just a, a weird delay yeah, there. So. Perfect. No bother at all. Yeah, Mickey Graham, I think when Mickey did finish up with the Cavan and uh, Cavan as during the summer, it probably was, and I think you probably touched on this before, probably it was time for him uh, to finish up. And I think he was probably very clear-minded about it all. I think he'd done an interview with Off the Ball a few days later and he did finish up and he did look fairly content with his work and I know he's gone in to help Andy Moore now with Leitrim. But I think, yeah, I think his work probably was done with the Cavan team. He kind of... You can nearly say, obviously, winning the Ulster title in 2020, but he did obviously get Cavan down to Division 4, so he got us back straight up to Division 2. So he probably in his book, he said, right, I kind of you know got Cavan into that kind of um, problem and I got them out of the problem, so straight back into Division 2. So, yeah, I think Mickey was probably happy with his work and obviously Raymond is the new manager now. But um, I think when Mickey, look at, looking back on his time at Cavan, he can, he can be very, very happy. Obviously, like, I suppose, the, pardon the pun, but there was probably a lot of up, ups and downs in the middle of it all. But he can, he can be very happy with the work he done and he'll always be remembered for the, for the obviously, the Ulster title that he won and obviously a couple of National League titles in between that as well. Um but yeah, Mickey, I think he'll be a very, very good help to Andy Moore and Darren Leitcher, to be honest with you. I think um, Mickey's a very, very shrewd operator. Um, I think it'll suit him down to the ground because I think Andy Moore will obviously be the you know the head honcho, the man in front of the cameras and taking a lot of, supposed to, <laughs> the, 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 for want of a better word, slack and criticism. So Mickey will suit him down to the ground. And I think he'll do really well with the Leitrim lads this year. He was obviously with Ballinamore um, this or last year. He was coaching them alongside Cavan. Um, I think in the off or when Cavan finished up, he was with Ballinamore. So he's experienced off Leitrim football already. So I think he, I think he honestly will do very well with Leitrim again. What's Leitrim sailing for this year ahead? Get out of Division Four. I'd say his breath, it has to be a target. But um, yeah, I think he'll do very well down there. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Kieran says here. I think Gracefield is in leash, lads. Uh, welcome back. There we go. Yeah, nice to know. I, I might be there on Saturday, Ed, but I don't know yet. To be honest with you, I am also kind of looking forward to just putting the feet up on the couch, relaxing, and everything else because it's been a it's been mm. a hectic Christmas. We go again for the mm. league division one, Monaghan yeah. opening day. It doesn't get uh, it doesn't get much better than that. Tomo says John was Raymond Gallagher a, a good appointment. God, lads, we have we haven't even yeah. started. Come on, give me a give me a break here, lads. Jesus, I'm only after coming away from Chris. I was waiting for Aaron to say, right, we're getting into the cabin action now. Aaron, how do we how, how do we start this podcast? There's too much excitement. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, what, what did like because I remember when the Raymond Gallagher appointment was, and I remember obviously in the in the group chat, obviously with you know a few of the other lads for for your own podcast and everything else. There was some murmurings of different appointments, and there was a few different people obviously going for the job. Like, what was your take when when Raymond Gallagher was was appointed? Was it the right choice? Do you think, or because I suppose it is one of them where he does have like he is obviously very inexperienced, and sometimes you don't know how these things can go. Like, you look at Vinnie Corey at Monaghan; no one expected him really to do as well as he has, and you know he's done brilliant at Monaghan. Um, you know, you've had people like Andy McGinley go on to Antrim and do a great job. And sometimes you can have other young managers who can go in and not be experienced. So it's kind of one of them where you don't really know like what, how it's going to go. But what was your take when uh, when Gallagher was appointed? Yeah, like you, you, I was, I was quite. I, I suppose a lot of people were probably taken back. I think when Mickey Graham did finish up a Cavan, and, and then. I think it was the Anglo Set newspaper literally just put up the three candidates that were going for the cabin job. I think it was four, and then it was it was it was it was tied down to three. So the three names that like were interviewed was uh, Jason O'Reilly. He used to play for Cavan. He, he scored that infamous ninety-seven goal in the Ulster final. Jason was obviously interviewed, and then Danny Hughes, the former down footballer, was obviously interviewed as well and then obviously Ray got it so I think there's probably a lot of people maybe quite upset the way maybe the news was kind of broke in terms of I think the other candidates found out through like the Irish news put up like a link I think it was Cahar O'Kane broke the news and I think the other can candidates that's how they nearly found out and obviously Raymond got the job after it all but um, I suppose look like, I suppose to play devil's advocate to a degree I think as I did tweet uh, tweet there last night, I think Ray is living out a dream. Like Ray knows no better than Calvin football. He's been he played, God, he played he played, he must have played for maybe fourteen to fifteen years for the Calvin setup. He he lives and breathes Calvin football, and I think he's living out a dream now by managing the lads. And he, he like I was watching him there last night. I was I was at the game at Berkeley Park last night, and he looked genuinely delighted to be in the position he's in. Um, it's there like Stephen Cluxton. I, I said to my brother on the way, um, way home from that game, a bunch of Cluxton done similar uh, as Gallagher. But um, 
No, I am genuinely, I'm very happy for Ray, but I suppose it's like anything in life, there's always going to be concerns, there's always going to be people saying this. It, it, the probably, for like a lot of the feedback I would have got up when I said about Ray being the manager was the lack of maybe experience. Um, to my knowledge, I don't think Ray has kind of you know, gone down that kind of line before. It's a big, big undertaking. Like I was talking to a few people in Breath Park there last night, and a lot of people saying it's a huge undertaking for him to go straight in from playing to managing straight away. Like, and I only seen a clip there last night on Twitter. I think it was a Tommy Rooney and Paddy Andrews and James Dunn who were probably making a couple of good points that, like, not in a million years, but they've kind of done it. You're kind of playing with lads and then you go to playing with it's a huge huge task for Ray um, he looks like he's taking it all astride you know we look very kind of co composed and relaxed in practice park there last night but the big thing for a lot of people seems to be the lack of experience that he has um, he's a serious backroom team I think everyone's got wind about the backroom team at this stage um, it's, it's a large number of people lots of experience but I really do hope it goes well for him because he looks so happy to be in the position he's in, living out probably living out a bit of a childhood dream to agree. Never mind play, like playing and then managing. It's 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 it's, it's different gravy sort of stuff. But um, just a lack of experience might just be the only thing I would be concerned about. Yeah, I suppose maybe the response to that though is obviously his backroom team. Like when you when you look at the amount of experience that's in the backroom team, he's obviously got Eamon Murray. In there, obviously, the, the, the former Mead ladies football manager obviously won back-to-back -back all Orleans when he was in charge of the Mead ladies. And you also have Stephen O'Neill coming in as well as a, as a forwards coach. So, um, and even looking through, like mm -hmm. looking at some, like I'm just looking at mm -hmm. the, the amount of people that are on the, the ticket here. And, yeah, you know, there's certainly a lot of people. <laughs> like just going, yeah, mm -hmm. going through it all. You've got former Cavan players, a good couple of former Cavan players on there. Um got a former Mayo player in there as well, uh, James Burke, I think it is. So you've got a whole host of um, of experienced heads coming in there, which I think is it's going to be huge for for Raymond Gallagher. In fairness, yeah, like it will be huge. And like, and in fairness, I did think I was looking at. I was I was probably watching. It's funny. I was only saying to a fellow earlier on. I was probably watching what was going on along the sideline. Then I was watching the game itself. It was really that poor quality of times, but. So basically you have James Burke, uh, James Burke, obviously he's been involved in the last uh, year or so. James was a coach with uh, James Horn in uh, Mayo. Um, and then he's obviously, he obviously has a lot of experience himself. And then you've, of course, Stephen Ree. We all know about the quality of Stephen O'Neill. He was he was part of Ending McGinney's back routine with Antrim. He was with the Tyrone Footballers a couple of years ago as well. So Ray did really look like he was kind of, I suppose... I suppose communicating a lot with James Burke and uh, Stephen Reid last night, like that looked really, I suppose, evident. And obviously, two lads that been there done that. And then, of course, you've Eamon Murray as well. Eamon has had unbelievable success with the Mead Lady Footballer. So, look, the background team is absolutely stellar. I really do have to say. Um, I suppose the only thing, and a lot of people would be saying, like it's when you have too many voices, that might, might lead to more problems. And then if one person might be saying one thing, another person might be saying another thing. So, you you know, you have a lot of voices. So it's more just kind of a situation where, as you want, maybe Ray, the book to kind of stop a Ray. And like, I hope that's not too difficult for him because like, there is so many people involved in that backroom team. Um, but again, there is lots of quality. It was, it was, as we do say, there is a lot of winners that's gone in there. Um, but I really do hope it can and does work for him because it, it really does look like he's put in so much kind of, I suppose, effort getting everyone involved. Um, and my God, Aaron, like we know, we, me and you always talk about like the levels of commitment that's involved in the game. It is probably true to the roof. It's a realistically, it is a full time job. Um, but look, at, again, I do reiterate, I hope it does go well for him. But look, it's a huge shot in the dark, probably from the county board to, I suppose, appoint Ray at the time as well. Because look, at when you look at the other candidates, I suppose Danny Hughes to a degree. And, I know Danny quite well. He's, he's a lovely fella. He didn't keep managed like his club team. He wanted to get into major championships. So Danny had a bit of experience, I suppose, but maybe the county board just didn't see see fit to give Danny the job. And then I suppose with Jason Riley, Jason would have won like an intermediate championship with a club called Lacken here in Cavan. He would have won a senior championship with Cavan Gales at 17. So you know, Jason Jason did have a bit of experience as well. You know, and this unfortunately it was from Jason's point of view, it was the second time of asking he, he just didn't get the Cavan job. So he, he probably was a bit peeved off to to a degree but um, look we can only wish Ray, Ray well but again it's a huge undertaking and you're really hoping you know him and his backroom team and everything is suppose is kind of is linking well and it's a good line of communication and there's there's not this or this lad saying that you're hoping the book, the book does have to stop a Ray so you're hoping that like you know there's a good I suppose coordination amongst the group 
Absolutely, yeah. Tomo says here, I might be going to the Mead Cabin game in uh, in Breffney Park. Yeah, that'll definitely be a nice one. cracker, no doubt. Uh, for any fan TV, since when did Gallagher retire? Remember that point he scored against Monaghan to end their summer in 2020 or 21? It was, uh, it was a hard defeat yeah. to swallow. Yeah, I think that was the one during COVID, I think, in winter, mm. wasn't it? Um, yeah, twenty. Uh, uh, yeah, very, very fit. Yeah, Jesus was great. I think that was literally in the midst of COVID lockdown, and I think that could have been just around Halloween. I think it was like the thirtieth or thirty first of October. I was on the way to, way to win the old title or the COVID Cup, as people say it. Um, yeah, Farney Army Farney Fan TV. Ray didn't actually. I think the story was if he was going to get the management job, he was just going to retire. So there was nothing kind of official retirement made. Um, so yeah, again, like if he's he's obviously not going to be playing now, and obviously Liam Brady from Rammers, uh, he was number one there last night. He's he looks like the replacement for Ray at the minute. Gary York and Bally is is in there as well. But yeah, so that not no official retirement, but I think the plan was if he was going to get the job, he was going to pack it in. But my God, he'd so many for Calvin. He was he was like for a lad that started off as a forward to end up as a goalie and a very very good goalie at that. It's it's it takes some uh, takes some uh, doing. Absolutely, yeah. And I suppose he's going to take some replacing between the sticks as well, because as you said, mm. Ernie Fan TV was saying there, like that point he scored, obviously towards the, the end of the game to beat Monaghan. I think he, he has been one of the top scoring goalkeepers over the last couple of years as well, in terms of um, he's obviously been taking the 45s quite consistently. And, you know, any freeze or out from off the ground from a distance, he's usually the man mm. standing over. So even finding a replacement for him between the sticks, mm. like that's going to be a, yeah. a loss. As well, like not having him actually out there on the yeah. field, but I suppose there's no mm-hmm. better man to, to pick his own replacement, is there? Yeah, true enough. Like he'll know best because he, he done the goals for so long. He done what nine years or eight to nine years, so it was it was quite a long time for him to be between the sticks. So no, he will know. And like in fairness, Liam Brady was very good for uh, was very good against Derry last night. He made two very very good saves. So he definitely done done himself very done himself no harm. And then of course. Gary O'Rourke from Ballyhays. Um, obviously, Ballyhays got to the Ulster final. Uh, uh, but I suppose it is last year. So last year at this uh, this stage, and Gary or Gary is a very very good keeper. He's a fantastic kick out and two very good lads to uh, potentially obviously to replace Ray at this stage. So Ray will know best. Um, but again, it'll it's it's it, it, big boots to fill because my God, Ray was he was exceptional in in between the six for um for Cavan. Let's not make no, no doubt about it. Um, it was always going to be the concern who was going to replace Ray because we obviously you know, Ray wasn't getting any younger, so we were always Cavan fans probably always did have it in the back of their mind, right? Who is going to be replacing this man when he does call it a day? So I really hope it goes well for Liam Brady and Gary Rourke, but. Liam was actually very good last night. Um, you have a man called Fergal O'Rourke from uh, Lara. He's um, he's there thereabouts as well. So look, their competition will be stiff between the three lads. Make no doubt about it. So hopefully, Ray can pick the right keeper. I suppose. Yeah, and that can only be a good thing. In fairness, having uh, the, the more options you can have for for the position, that can that can only be helpful. Uh, Farney Fan TV saying ninety six points in ninety nine championship games for Galligan, mm. just point Began, Morgan, and uh, and Cluxton. Mm. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That goes to show, like considering the cabin don't always go as far as the likes of, you know, your, your Dublins and, um, you know, your, your Monaghan's and the championship and everything. So fair mm-hmm. play there. Just looking back at, at last year for Cavan, maybe just doing a bit of review of of, uh, of last season, like looking at the league, first of all, obviously got promoted pretty comfortably enough. I know when you look at the league table, it doesn't really look that way because you finished second with 10 points. It was the same as down but you're already promoted going into your final two games. And I think you lost, I think the two defeats in the league were your last two games against Antrim and Fermanagh. Two games mm-hmm. you didn't even need to win. You obviously mm-hmm. beat Fermanagh in the Division 3 final. Mm-hmm. Disappointing defeat, obviously, to Armagh in Ulster. Mm-hmm. And then I suppose in the Talchin Cup, knocked out by down as well. So, like, it was a le- It kind of... The, the season sort of started well, and then it just... Finished very badly. Petered out in the end, didn't it? Mm. Yeah, like, it, like, I think last year was a very open down sort of season I think Mickey Graham probably was off the mindset right you know let's just get out of Division 3 and let's get back up to back up to Division 2 and I think that's probably what his aim was and like Jesus I remember that I think that Antrim game it was up in Carrigan Park if my memory serves me correctly and Jesus I think I I was just looking at the score on Twitter and my god we were down by a good couple of points and Jesus I thought like is, is this real life kind of thing to agree with the form Antrim were showing up until that game and Antrim bet us um, and then obviously for Man bet us in Breffley Park but obviously we bet them Croke Park the week after but yeah like the league I think Mickey's aim was I think once we took the first was the five games we would have played 
would have been four to mm. five games that we won. So I think Mickey yeah. was like, right, let's just get these games won. And then I think the last two, like, okay, probably did take the foot of the pedal. Like, let's probably not be around the bush. Get enough points and just go up. I think that's Mickey. But that's what Mickey's objective was. The players done that. They got the wins and up the went. In fairness, they took they took care of them games very professionally. Um, I remember like to put up very high scores and against the likes of Tipperary, against the likes of Longford. So it it was professionally done up until the last two games. Probably freak results to a degree. I know for Manor Bettis and Brefty Park, uh, that was a bittersweet one for for Manor because for Manor haven't had much joy with us um, in the last couple of years, and then obviously in the league final, the league final. For I can remember, like the first half was poor, and then Calvin kind of got going in the second half. Um, obviously not again, not a game for the ages. For Manor were very, very poor that um that night, considering they're so good the week before. They probably should have saved their performance for Crow Park, but um, then come champ, like come championship, I think the the Armagh game. Oh man, like it was just. Oh God! Looking back on the Armagh game, it was kind of like a like I don't kind of like kind of like bandy and around the world too much, but like it was nearly like from a Cavan point of view, it was like the great kind of depression after the game. Like it was just we kind of built ourselves up, built ourselves up so much for that game. I know Armagh got to the final, got betting or whatever, but like we we genuinely did think that there was a lot of hype and buzz going into that game that we could win it and maybe the good side of the draw in Ulster and go on and get to an Ulster final. Didn't happen like that. The rain came down in Brefty Park. Armagh completely acclimatised the conditions and just took care of us, really. Um, Calvin were absolutely desperate that day. And it was really, really just a glum feeling after that Armagh game. Um, Jesus, it was it was just it was just a shocking performance. No one really had any excuses for us. I think Mickey himself just looked just he was shocked after it was just such a bad performance. And then it was just picking ourselves up for the Tallinn Cup. And I know we won the first couple of games, poor enough sort of a game against, I think it was against maybe Leash. Um, and then who else did you have in the Tallinn Cup? Was it London? I think we we, we we took care of London. And so, look, you're always probably going to beat them teams. I think Leash gave us a bit of a fright a few st- a few stages in the Kingspan Brefty Park, if memory say it correctly. But then... Just oh man, just I probably <laughs> had to more support the depression. The, the, the game gets down when they knocked us out. Um, yeah, that was a real low point. And Mickey probably, I think it took a couple of weeks later. He did. He packed his bags with Cavan. I think that was a real low point. Another low point. And probably, probably the finish of the season. That's the way after the Armagh game finished up. It was probably just not great. I know down under Conor Laffrey we were building, building, br- building bridges. But Jesus, like it was, it was not expected. The Kings, but briefly, we thought we could have took care of them at home. But down beating us probably was dice on the cake for a bad season. So. Yeah, 2023 probably wasn't a great year. I know we did get promotion and that was important, but we were on the right side of the draw in Ulster. You could have had a real proper go in the Talton and it just didn't seem like that. And I think the wheels really did fall off after the Yarmah game. Um, like, my God, I think we were playing Leash in Breffley Park in the Talton Cup. And, oh, sure, look, I think there was... A, there was a, geez, how many was even a... I think the, the stand was barely full or something really just downbeat sort of a feeling and just no one really kind of wanted to be at them games and all the crowds picked up for the down game and bits and bobs but um yeah hopefully we can kind of push on this year and kind of right the wrongs obviously from last year I know obviously the pressure will be on Ray but I uh, yeah looking back uh, like god I definitely remember that I, I think I went out for a few points after that Armagh game and geez the, uh, the feeling about the you know yourself after like I know Dublin didn't experience many losses in their time but you know after a bad defeat the feelings are just low like Armagh were obviously on the crest of a wave, but Mike, it was just a really just desperate night in Brevney Park, and you wouldn't look back with it too much fondness. But uh, yeah, definitely a very mixed bag 2023, and hopefully 2024 can be more prosperous. Yeah, Gavin says the down in Armagh games in the championship yeah. at home were terrible. The rest of the year yeah. was uh, was pretty good though. Um, yeah, like the, you just put a, a case, you know put it down to a case of Mickey Graham took Cavan as far as he could really, and that mm. was the the main because I remember even in the Talchin Cup, I think most people obviously haven't lost in the final of the year previous. Like most people had yourselves as favourites, and I do think like if you got over down, you got a bit of momentum behind you. I do reckon you probably could have beat Mead in the final. So yeah, yeah. Um, do, do you think it was just a case of Mickey Graham just? You know, I suppose he took he took this cabin team as far as he could, really. Yeah, like I suppose that kind of that, that kind of probably reverts back to but like the, my point. I think when he probably got, he, I, look again, it's hard to know people's mindsets and ways of going on. But I think when he did get us back out of Division Three and up to Division Two. I don't actually. I wouldn't like to say, but I wouldn't like to think his. Work, he felt like his work was done. Like I don't, whatever. I know you can't just blame the weather for everything, but my God, like it was just very, very as as uh, the commentator there said, it was very bad performance against our man. It just you couldn't really, you couldn't really make up any excuses for what happened that day. Like it was just very poor, and I I, I don't know like. 
it was a pity to kind of sign off the way he did. Like I know I get get his promotion out of Division Two or get up to Division Two, but it's just when you feel there could have been a better finish to the year, that's probably what why Cavan fans are so disappointed. And like fairness, like, I know people say this, that, but that and the other bit, the Armagh team, but we we're in Division Two with them this year. We do level up to Armagh on their day, and I know like I know Johnny Murphy, the our fellow pundit, would be give us good slag about Armagh, but I really do think we can level up to them on like we've had a good old championship record against Armagh in recent years as well. So there's no reason why we can't and. I can't and will, but um, yeah, I think Mickey, as you said, as you said, he did probably reach the end. I think get knocked. I think there was definitely, and Jesus, in fairness, I didn't. I just probably had. She's wearing the down jersey. Probably not a good omen. Hour, good omen, but I probably didn't. I just didn't go to that down game because I probably had a bit of a weird feeling that we down were flying the week leading into that. Connor Lafferty was flying, so I just said right. Probably best to avoid it. My God, the onslaught on online. You're looking on Twitter. You're looking on Facebook, and it was just a lot of bad feeling after that down game. So unfortunately, I think Mickey Graham said, "Right, yeah, this is as you say. This is probably all I can do with this thing." Yeah, I was just thinking that as well. Wearing a, a down jersey. I know. Wrong shout. Wrong shout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, put the wrong jersey on by accident. <laughs> yeah, not like me. Ah, uh, sure. Look, I, I think of a Galway hat there as well. To be fair, I picked up a Galway hat on holiday. Oh, very um, good. Uh, many many years ago probably why they don't really do that well i probably jinx them <laughs> that's probably why i have, a, have an awful habit of jinxing teams recently um oh, me and you both me and you both buddy looking looking ahead to the league then next year just looking at the the fixtures here so they're away donegal home cork away loud away a lot of away games there to begin with mead home armagh away from mana home like what? What's the expectation for Cavan in Division Two next year? Like, yeah. I mean, obviously in the last like five, six years, I think it's been you've either been promoted or relegated. That's usually how it's how it's gone. Um, Hopefully, Ray can book that trend. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's what, what, what's the expectation really? Because it's going to be tough in there. Like, we we, we saw how good they all looked um, last night as well. I know, like they went really strong, and Armagh probably put out a third or you know second or third under twenty team. Um, yeah, yeah, under twenty team, but like. They, we one thing we know from Jim McGuinness is that he, those Donegal lads are going to come flying out of traps. Oh god, yeah. League. Oh god, yeah. Yeah, look, look, a hundred percent. But I think Division Two this year, I think Ray would genuinely be delighted. And I think this is probably, like I guess I said this um, on Twitter a couple of weeks ago. I think this is probably where our ceiling is. I think we are a Division Two team if we can just kind of sustain ourselves. Because like I think it, like we did show a lot of quality in Division Three last division three last year we did show teams where we were too good for them we were 100 percent too good for division four so i think if we can sustain ourselves in division two because we we did try division one football in 17 and 19 and just went straight back down again so i think if we can withstand ourselves there is winnable games there like i know even way trip to uh, cork i think that'll be very very that'll be an extremely tough test um you have the likes of me i think you've uh, me at home do you have the fixtures in front of you aaron yeah, I have them here. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you want to go through them there, maybe we could just if we could. My, my, what's the, the first game? So the first one is Kildare yeah. away. Kildare away, like Kildare away. Mm. That's in Croke Park, I think. Is it? It is actually. Yeah, it actually. Croke yeah, Park. Yeah. A double, double header with uh, with a double Monaghan game actually. Double. Oh, beautiful! Might make the venture mm. up to that. Um, yeah, yeah, that'll be tight. That'll be tough. Um, Kildare obviously under Glenn Ryan. Hopefully, he'll not be blaming the music that night. Um, <laughs> I had to get that one in. Yeah, you have to throw that one in. <laughs> no, I think I think I think that joke's nearly getting old now. We need him. We need him to do something else or something. Oh, he yeah. will. Aaron Prendergast. He will. Do not. Do not. Uh, do not dismay at that man. Um, no, I think that will be. It's, it's a very tough game to start, Kildare. I don't think many teams would like that, especially Crow Park. Cavan of this voodoo and Crow Park about kind of maybe underperforming when they get up to the big stage, but it'll be it'll be a tough test against Kildare. Obviously, Kildare, obviously Newbridge getting done up, so this is this is the reason for Crow Park. But I think it'll, it'll definitely be a tough game. Uh, Kildare, I don't know, is Daniel Flynn has he committed for this year ahead? I've I've no word on that. I haven't, he's, heard, I haven't heard a yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, haven't yeah. Haven't heard a word. So yeah, so he's obviously a huge addition to that Kildare uh, team. Then obviously Jimmy Highland, he was very good for Nace there a couple of weeks ago against Kilmacud, but um. Yeah, like I think it'll be a very tight game. Again, you kind of need to hit the ground running as well. Can we kind of get over this Croke Park voodoo in time? Last night probably didn't help, but look, I suppose we could we could touch in the league games when they when they start coming up to when we know more about players and who's going to be fit and stable and bits and bobs. But um, Jesus, yeah, you could be potential draw there. You wouldn't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like even your home games, like you've you've done all at home, which you know second game out. That's probably going to be a very tough game. Looking at you know, yeah. 
Donegal are probably going to want to start strong, although you never know. They, they, you know, I don't think it's going to be all plain sailing for, for Donegal. There might be some some slip-ups there, but your your final two home games are the, are the big ones, though. I think Mead at home on March yeah. 2nd, and then the last game of of, of the, the league season, coincidentally, it's Fermanagh again at yeah. home. So, I mean, th- those two home games could be could be crucial because you'd be looking at it and thinking yeah. Fermanagh allowed... I think maybe Mead might be in in around relegation as well. So yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I game. look at it div- like, in fairness because if, like, it's always been Division Two. It's probably been the always um, the best um, the, the best uh, divisions. But I think yeah, it will be very very tight just to probably sustain ourselves. But I think you need what? How many six points to stay up, isn't it? About that. Which yeah, you, well, six much, points. Yeah, usually six. Yeah, points. so yeah. It, yeah, if you get your three wins, and like I think there is very well big games. That as I said, like that Kildare mm-hmm. game it, it is absolutely. It, it just it kind of just depends how much emphasis Glenn Ryan does put into the league with Kildare. Like you know, can he can he get a bit of a run going in Leinster? It'll be very interesting to see. But I think we will. I honestly do think we can and will stay in Division Two. We will need to hit the ground running. It needs to be an aim of ours to sustain ourselves in Division Two because that's where we are at when we do play at our best. Um, I know we again don't want to repeat myself, but we have been in Division One. It has gone well, so I think if we can just stay put, get the few wins, get any injuries cleared up in time, I think we should be able to stay put in Division Two, and it has to be a huge aim for us this year. Yeah, Gavin was saying here actually. I think Gavin Kildare was changed to Carlo oh, because God. that's where all of Kildare's home games will be. Yeah, I just googled it there, and it actually is. Yeah, it's in um, it's in Carlo. So okay. unfortunately for you, John, you won't be able to make the. <laughs> Pick up, uh, to Dublin, you know? We could have had a few points there. But... I know, I know. That's the first thing that came into my head. Never mind the match. God, just, I don't know, hit the dice or something all day. Or, oh, God, yeah. yeah. Carl was a good spot, to be fair, though. I remember. Um, Never been. There before, yeah. Never I been. With, I went away with a few lads there uh, a couple of years ago. Okay. Was, uh, during, during college. Good bit, of, good, good bit of a laugh down there. Good uh, good student town and everything else. Brilliant. But, uh, but yeah, so might be, might be, might be worth the trip, in fairness. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, who knows? Gavin might be having us on there. So Crow Park, fingers crossed. Change your heart. Crow Park or no? We should have like a Crow Park or nowhere. Crow, uh, like the week <laughs> leading into that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think Kildare and look, I, I think it might benefit Kildare get more game, even more games yeah, in Crow Park and then narrow the narrow the advantage ever so slightly. But um, but there we go. Yeah, like so. You're thinking then expectation just sort of stay up fifth, you know, fifth <laughs> position, fourth position, something like that. Yeah. Ah, yeah. To be honest, yeah. As long to uh, avoid the drop, avoid the drop would be the has mm. to be the big game. And there is, like, I know obviously, like last last night probably wasn't a good show for from uh, for Calvin against Derry uh, last night. But I I do think if we can withstand ourselves, stay there, it'll breed a bit of confidence, and then just build platforms from there. But no, I think yeah, survival. I don't really mind where we finish as long as it's not the bottom two, of course. But no, there is winnable games there. Like you're talking, like I know Kildare, the likes of Cork will be very tricky. You know, we have a good enough record against Mead in recent years. We have a very good record against Roman in recent years as well. Um, no, so I think we, I think, I th- and Loud, Loud could be a sticky one. Loud could be a very sticky one for Calvin, the likes of Sam and Roy. I know Mickey Hart's gone, Jerry Brennan's in there now. That's a few talk points there, but very sticky games in Division 2 this year. Very look, very much looking forward to getting to, to the games as well. Um, there'd be big Calvin crowds in a lot of these games. Division 2 is where you want to be. Division 1, the games are going to be, a, lot, a few of the games will be on the TV. It's just where you want to be, Aaron, because like, to my knowledge, I don't think any of our games would have been, like, you know, shown footage of them in Division 3 and 4. So, it's just where Calvin football needs to be. You're 1 and 2 divisions because as Aaron, I, I suppose I don't want to sound like a broken record. I've said this to you a million times. It's a football in my county. You need to be. You need to be in these positions. You need to be in these league standards. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and I suppose it was. You know, Cavan were in Division One not even too long ago. So, um, I suppose that that should be the the aspiration most definitely long term. Farney Fan TV says Cavan could be in the All Ireland series come the end of the league. I reckon they have a good enough squad mm-hmm. to push for a third or fourth finish. I like what I've seen last year. Yeah in the league yeah like i think that's an important point as well isn't it because like i can't really remember now the whole the whole structure of how this year's championship might look but i know set if you get relegated from seven and eight i think you'll be in the talchin cup and possibly sixth place because i know claire there's a possibility claire and munster might potentially go to to a munster final again um when you look at the draw the munster championship so it's looking like if you avoid the bottom three and get fifth or fourth then you should yeah. be 
you should be in the All Ireland series. But look, at, you know, the All Ireland Championship structure at times is like, <laughs> you know, a textbook from Einstein back in you know the eighteen hundreds or whatever. So we'll have to yeah. wait and see. But but there we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, see, that's what I mean. And they're trying to understand the whole structure at the minute. Like, geez, Matthew Hurley, or some of the boys that have to come on and figure it out, or maybe Seamus Brady from, oh man, like, it's very, very difficult to understand. But again, look. Stay put in Division Two. I think that has to be the has to be look look a promotion. Promotion would be an absolute brilliant, you know, brilliant bit of um, I suppose progression for camp football. But realistically, grand scheme of things, I think is Division Two is where we're at. Like it's clear to be seen we were too good for Division Three and Four last year. Sustain ourselves in Division Two because I think <coughs> for the way things are probably are at the minute, and I suppose Ray's first year, he'd be genuinely delighted to stay put in Division Two. Who do you reckon does get promoted then? Oh God! <laughs> I'd love to say ourselves, but it's just at the minute it's quite hard to see. I think well, Danny Kulu can tell us more on this uh, in a couple of weeks' time. But I think Cork could really be threatening it, and Kildare potentially if they can get their house in order. I think Loud might regress after Mickey Hart leaving. I just get that feeling. Sam Mulroy was absolutely gutted when he left. Um, I could just tell by him he was very, I suppose, if, if very truthful about whole, the whole situation. But Tony Gawler there as well. Jim McGuinness. Mm. Uh, me there too. It's oh, it's a very, very good division, Aaron. Like you can't get away I'm from it. Yeah, Arma as well. Arma as well. How can you forget about the Jesus at the the might of Arma? Um, they might win a penalty shootout someday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that one in. You're, you're on fire here. <laughs> Um, I was going to say to you, uh, who'll get promotion out of all that? Probably, I think if both teams get their house in order, Arma and Donegal probably. Yeah. Yeah, I think so as well. Farney Fan TV says Tony Gall need. Mm. Yeah, look, a lot of people. I think Armagh will go up. I think Armagh will go up. I think, like, but see, Armagh's league form, Armagh put in so much emphasis into the championship as well. So it'll be very interesting mm-hmm. to see what way they approach the league. But if they can get their strong team back, like the, look, last night was just a blip. And I know a lot of people are saying, and my God, I've seen a tweet. I don't know if you see it, Aaron. I think it was a GA league table. So if any day you beat Armagh, it's a good day. It's one sport. Like, I heard that was that like McGainy wasn't even at the game, and I think it was like Armagh's under twenty team. So like, yeah, come on, like you know, it's yeah, yeah. No, you can never read too much into into preseason. I mean, you only have to look at last year, for example, in the O'Burn Cup. Like Longford done really well um, in, in the O'Burn Cup. I kind of, I think yeah. they played. I think Dublin won it in the end. Like that, that, that's what I mean. Dublin won it in the end. I can barely even remember it. A hundred percent, yeah. And. Longford went on to get relegated in Division Three, so like it's it's one of them things. It's a it's a good barometer. It's a it's a good place to try out young players, try different mm-hmm. things out. But mm-hmm. again, it's not like you can never look like. Remember when Cork absolutely battered Kerry uh-huh. last year in pre season, and yeah, but you know, yeah, ev- ev- everyone was bigging up Cork and but, playing yeah. down Kerry, and then Cork went out and lost to Mead. So you yeah. just can't you can't be looking into pre season too much. Like oh, you can't. Like in, in fairness, if you were to look in, like like my God, you would break your heart if you were to read too much into the game last night, and you're not supposed to because it's trial and error. Like there's lads getting their debuts, there's young lads coming on to the team, like. I think I think from like that like going back to that like Armad Donny Gall thing for people to be saying like it's it's this and it's that and great like I like, I couldn't name one Armad player that I knew in that whole panel there like and it it just speaks volumes when McGinney yeah. was away elsewhere like McGinney didn't I think he sent like the did he was it the under twenty management team to the game or something McGinney didn't even turn up so yeah. I like Donny Gall fans if there's any fans watching Cam your ham lads it's January. Absolutely, absolutely. And to be fair, like when I looked at both teams in score BO, I don't think it was Donegal's best starting fifteen, but it was it was very close. And like to be fair, they brought Wishing mm-hmm. Gallon off the bench as well and brought a lot of the lads off the bench in yeah. fairness. In terms of personnel for, for Cavan next year, how's it looking? Like obviously you won't have Raymond Galligan as we know. Don't think Thomas Galligan's coming back. Not sure. I haven't heard anything on Tomas. I haven't heard anything Tomas. And it's probably I think mm. he just is that travel bug, Aaron. Um I think when he when I yeah. when I heard he was going off travelling, I think I'm I'm not sure what part of the world is it. Oh, I I could I'd only be lying if I, I, I it could even be Australia. Or, I'm not sure where he is, but he's still travelling at the minute. And oh, God, it'd be hard to incentivize a lad to come over from Kenneth Cup games with Gwanit. Yeah, no, no Grod McKernan I've seen as well. Yeah, like in God, I, in fairness, I definitely have reservations about that. And I was only talking to a few people in Brefty Park about that last night as well. Um, grod has been an unbelievable servant to Calvin football. God, I remember him from his under 21 days and the likes of 2010 and 2011. And it's hard to believe he's basically playing for Calvin oh. since then. Um, 
it was in the Anglo Celt there last week that Ray McGalligan just basically said he wasn't part of their plans. And like, it's, I don't know, like, look, is there a window there that he can come back or like, you know, is, is the door fully closed? I'm not too sure. But it was just, it was, it was odd language, I suppose, Ray to be using in terms of like, I hope the door's not fully closed because, like, God, you could always rely on Garoud. I know some of the big games at times passed by, maybe in the Ulster Championship or All Ireland series at times, but he was, he's was he been an unbelievable servant of Cavan football. I hope that's not him just saying, right, Garoud, thanks very much. We'll see you later. Like, he had a great year in 2020 when we won Ulster as well. Um, he's always basically been there. And he's a mammoth of a man, as I said. So hopefully that's not the end of Garoud, but. I just didn't like that terminology, you know, Ray was basically using, like, you know, that's, you know, he's not part of our plans because I think, I think Ray will need all the help he can get this year, especially stay, trying to stay put in Division 2 and just maybe for to, to say Garoge is not part of our plans was just, um, I don't know, it's it just quite odd, but sure, hopefully that's not the end we've seen for him because he's been a classy footballer. Yeah, well, I was thinking, thinking the exact same as you as well when I seen the the article because it's not like it was a retirement or anything like that. It was, you know, and it didn't even seem necessarily like Garoud didn't want to play. It maybe mm. saw, you know, looked like maybe it was Raymond Gallagher's decision, and I, I don't really know, like if yeah, you know, we don't know, maybe, but nothing comes yeah. out. Yeah, I'm yeah. no, sorry to put in, but like you see, nothing comes out. Like you, like, and this is what yeah. I'm saying about county setups, and we we talk about the dubs being so close, book, but you're just you're clutching at straws any time you hear stuff from the county. So like we don't know. Like we, we we don't know has Garoud like announced his retirement has Garoud put into like the WhatsApp group chat and said to Ray like I'm not going to be about has he we don't like no one yeah. really knows about Garoud's situation like like we hear all sorts but I just wouldn't like to see it being a situation he's been such an unbelievable serve in the Cavan football you could always rely on him he was always kind of there and for him just to you know I just just to finish up after maybe that down game and that's kind of it it'd be very disappointing but oh look it's, you know county setups work in mysterious ways aren't. Yeah, they do in fairness. But I mean, who who do you think comes in then? Like any younger players then? Because yeah. as you said, like there's gonna be a few players anyone else leaving even? Well, I think Connor Moyna, uh, Connor Moyna would have would have been there since basically 2015, 2016 and around that. And Connor Moyna is due to get married either this year or next year, so he'll be quite busy. He'll be a busy man now for the next couple of months. But um in fairness, Connor went traveling in, I think, if my memory serves me correctly, 2020, and then would have come back in 2021. Had a good year, 2019, the year got to the Ulster final. Um, but unfortunately, Connor just couldn't really stake his claim in the Cavan team the last couple of years. Um, I think maybe down to potentially just a lack of game time, maybe it might be one of Connor Connor's uh, frustrations. Um, obviously, Connor would have had a lot of experience in 2014. He was, he was joint captain and probably a very good player. I think the year he went traveling, you know, then he came back and then he probably just, since he nearly came back from traveling, he's probably just been on the fringes of the team, not getting much game time. So that could be down to a lot of it, maybe the lack of game time or just other commitments that's going on in life. Cause we always talk about the commitment of the game and it is very much time consuming. Um, but other names than that, I haven't really heard of anyone else. Oh, like the, the Anglo Celt just reported it was Gro McCarran and Conor Moyne, but if there could be there could be potentially more lads or maybe lads who are on the fringes, but um that's all retirement wise or lads that could be potentially fully done for Cavan is what I heard from was um uh, Connor Moyna. I growed um Killian Clark as well. He was there at the game yesterday. I think he's given it one more year. I think he, he's gonna be there for Cavan this year. I thought Clark was going to finish up but he's he's staying put. Um I think there's other yeah, I think that just that all I just heard them too, and then obviously, of course, you might have heard or maybe other younger lads, but there is a bit of an influx. Like James Smith, um, I remember you were having a conf- me and you were having a conversation with uh, James Smith. He's back. He was playing full forward last night. He was quiet enough last night now, but he's back. He's a he's a serious footballer, and um, it's great to have him back uh, back around back amongst the team again. But um, you don't want to lose too many more, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and what what players do you think maybe will will come into the team? Come into the team, but yeah, there was a few debutants uh, there last night. Uh, Jay Smith's brother, uh, Peter Smith from Crusher Law, he came on as a sub there last night. Uh, Jack Tully from Cavan Gales. Um, there's um, there's a guy called Emmanuel Shehu. Um, he was he, his brother Joshua was Joshua was playing for Cavan Gales in the minor final the other day. Cavan Gales were narrowly bet in the minor final. Uh, so the Shehu brothers are all very very good footballers and a, a welcome welcome addition to Cavan football. My God, we'll t- we'll take them with open arms. They're brilliant lads. Um. But I think it's it's like from the cabin panel. There's like I think there's like Brian O'Connell from Rammer. Um, 
he was there a couple of years ago. Uh, you have Mark McGee. So, look, McKenna Cup, as I said, it's very trial and error. You're kind of bringing lads in and out. But it seems to be at the minute, I think, well, very much like any team really are. And I think coming down the home stretch, I think, and probably Cavan's mindset, and someone only said this yesterday, Donegal had a lad that was 17 that came on for them. Cavan have always kind of stuck with the kind of the old guard to kind of get them over the line to a degree. So it kind of looks like that. I'd say coming down the home stretch, Aaron, it'll be very much reverting back to the team you had last year. And, like it's just probably the unfortunate reality for lads like it's probably bursting the bursting the backside since October, November, doing runs, doing this, and then you're chopped after the mechanic cup. Like and my God, like in fairness, I really hats off to the county lads because like <laughs> me, me and my brother were driving away from the game yesterday and the substitutes were doing runs and drills after the game and sure Christ, like imagine lads were working in Dublin and you have to head up the road again. Like it's it's a serious commitment, Aaron. Like geez, the rather than to me, but it's just County football, it's a harsh reality because like your know, Ray picks up the phone and if you're not part of his plans after mechanic up, you're saying to yourself, you know, what we're up to do for the last three months. Yeah, yeah, no, like and especially in this kind of weather as well and yeah. conditions over the last few days. So absolutely indeed. Just looking ahead to the to the championship. Um you've got uh, you've got a nice draw in fairness. You've got Monaghan, winner mm-hmm. of that then plays Tyrone, winner of that then plays Derry Donegal. So um yeah, I suppose, look, listen, not the toughest draw there for Kevin. Mm. Yeah, well, I, th- I think that a lot of people are probably saying, like, about the, uh, oh, hold on a minute, you're slagging, aren't you? <laughs> And it doesn't yeah. it doesn't get it doesn't get much tougher than that, does it? Like, I know, we know, we know, we know. Jesus to, to add to it. Um Monaghan first game will be very interesting because Monaghan probably we did beat them in nineteen, we bet them in twenty twenty. Was there any other games we bet them in after that in the championship? So we had the, we had the two games we bet them in the last couple of years, but um mm. it'll be a very tough game to start with. Obviously, Monaghan will be absolutely mad to put one over us again. The good record against us as well, in fairness, like the better than 13 and 40, 13 and 15, even. Um that'll be a very good game of football. Well, you're nearly be already looking forward to it. I know it's only January, but the game will be in April or May. But I'll be very tight. Modern Calvin games are always very tight. Um, very interesting if Conor McManus will be, will be fully fully fit for that game or fully all good to go. But it is probably a very tough, uh, tough ultra championship draw. But again, raise mindset is it consolidate yourself in Division Two and start building blocks, or is it just beat Monaghan? And then whatever happens after that's a bonus kind of thing. And then obviously whatever happens with the Tottenham Cup. But yeah, the championship from the Cavan end of things, I suppose we can get over the get over the McKenna and get over the league first. But a run in Ulster with the teams that's around us really flying at the minute. Like Derry will be like if you think about it, Aaron, like I think Derry will be very good under Mickey Hart. I think he'll get a serious like in fair, I know there's been a lot of debate and talk about Mickey Hart uh, joining Derry, but I think he will get a serious tune out of them lads. I think Armagh under McGinney. Again, which we all know with Armad, like always just being so close and not just getting over the line. But Armal did there, thereabouts. Donny Gall under McGuinness be very interesting that as well. Like, God, I was watching Pan McBurdy talk after that game last night, and it's only the kind of cup. And McBurdy was always, he was always, I suppose, a very, you know, he was very matter of fact sort of character, but he was very serious minded. That interview last night, he was kind of not getting too ahead of himself. So, like, Donny Gall would be there, Tyrone under Brian Dewar, Fergal Logan. I'm surprised. Very surprised Fergal Logan and Brian Dewar stayed put. Actually, you got to thought they were going to finish up, but so if the other teams around us absolutely fine. So look at to be honest with you, if we if we if we can try stay in Division Two, beat Monaghan, and then after that anything's a bonus, Aaron. Really, mm. that and that's just being honest. Is but you know it's yeah. I think I think I think probably an important thing really is the league when you think about it. Like, yeah, even looking at that draw there, like if you can. Again, I don't think it's going into the Talshin Cup. You know, I suppose it gets talked about like it's, you know, the, the, but the, the, worst but the thing Cup's the going to be, but the Talshin Cup's going to be tougher and tougher to win every year. So mm-hmm. the fact, um, uh, the fact, a uh, bit of optimism for twenty four. No one probably expect Kevin to lose third. <laughs> Jeez, Kevin, it's being realistic, unfortunately. Um, but well, look, any any can happen. That's the kind of world we live in. But uh, the Talshin Cup, Aaron, as I say, it's getting tougher and tougher to year win every year. So. You know, we did have chances to do well in it, you know, but sorry, you're saying. No, I was just saying, like, obviously, like, the main focus will be to finish as high up in the league as possible so mm-hmm. you get your place in the in the All-Ireland Series. But I was nearly thinking, like, you go into the All-Ireland Series, fair enough, you know, we, we saw a couple of surprises in there last year, Cork getting a couple of wins, you know, Westmead getting a draw, and it was fairly competitive enough in fairness, but... Like, what would you rather nearly go into the All Ireland series? Maybe not do that much. Maybe you get to a preliminary round game, you finish third place, or maybe you finish bottom of your group, or 
the Talchin Cup where you have the possibility of going all the way and maybe winning it. Like, yeah, what, what would you rather nearly? Yeah, a couple of headaches probably for Rick. Like, and heading in, like, you know, what, what, like, apples or oranges is what you prefer. Like, but, um, mm. it's hard to know, like, you know, do you go and win the Totten Cup and get a bit, like, get a bit of silverware? Because, God, we've we seen the, when, when the one, the night they won the Ulster, my God, no one could meet up, but you've seen the scenes after. So, I think a bit of silverware would definitely not go astray. Um, mm. it would be, it would be absolutely brilliant and even have a, have a big push in Division Two. But I think it's probably, you probably need to be pragmatic. I think when you're looking at the quality of side in Ulster at the minute, and it being so competitive, and always was competitive. The teams rising. I just think the teams around us probably are at a bit operate, operating at a bit bit of a different level. Like when you're looking at, like Jim McGinnis will a hundred and ten percent get a bounce after a bounce, bounce out of them Donegal lads. I think Kieran McGinn with our man, like you, you, you see Conor Gilligan coming in and giving them a hand. Now he'll be a serious addition. Like Fergal Logan, right there, thrown. It is very interesting. I thought there's going to be a shake up there. So the teams around us. Probably really just kind of flying, whereas Cavan, like I know, under Ray, Ray will give it his best shot. But I just think the experience that the other managers have around us will probably help them so much more than us to agree. And it might just take that year or two with Cavan to really develop this team. And it might mm. just take that bit of time to for Ray to get the response that he wants from the lads. And obviously, Ray probably has a two to three year plan, and hopefully, all will go well for him. But I think this year. If you're being realistic, and I know probably Gavin really, really wants a bit of optimism, but if you're just staying in Division Two, you'll know, get maybe a win against Monaghan and see whatever happens in the Talton. Try win the Talton, of course. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Like if you end up in it, I think, <coughs> uh, I think, yeah, you should definitely, definitely go and try win it. If you ended up in the All Ireland series, like, how do you reckon you'd you get on? Oh, there? win the All Ireland. Oh, win it, win it. Yeah, go up, go up the stand. Yeah, go, go up the stand. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> you know, you've, won, you've you've won the joint most amount of All Ireland uh, from an Ulster team. I'm pretty sure. Alongside God, God is when we God is when we win one again. Um, yeah, look, in All Ireland, the way the format is, like an All Ireland quarter final. Of course, that'd be that'd be. That'd That'd be probably be Cavan Cavan's limit. It'd be it'd be great to get there, and I suppose a few backdoor games would be would be absolutely brilliant. But I think the way the season probably will pan out, it might just see us into Talton. And again, I probably still try to need. I think everyone needs to try to figure out the whole format and the way it works. But um, yeah, I think if I'd, I'd probably prefer a bit of silverware, um, prefer to see, have to have a bit of silverware than you know just have a shaky sort of an all, all Ireland campaign. Like a, a Talton Cup would probably, would, in fairness, it would mean the world to Cavan fans. Yeah, Gavin says prepare to see Cavan and Sam again, like we gave the Talton Cup two goals and uh, it didn't work. I, I suppose, yeah, like it's it's one of them, you know, you. I suppose. I was going to uh, mention another county there, you know, who's gone on a drought of not winning a, a major trophy, but we won't go there. We won't say it. We won't go there. Oh, the green and red, <laughs> the green and red. <laughs> Aaron, but it just all depends. How do we like, are we going to have like a positive mindset on these podcasts with the Mayo situation, the Cavan situation or, but how many days is this Mayo one go on? We crack a joke. 25, 26,000 days, is it? <laughs> I think it's something like that, yeah. There's a Twitter, there's a very good Twitter account that goes around and you know clocks all the days and mentions. It. <laughs> um, so, th- so there we go. Like if you if you've nothing to do in your spare time, you can go and just count all the days. Jeez, it must have took a while counting all those days. Oh my god, how did it do it? that Twitter account? My god, how did it do it? Like, and I wouldn't mind. It has a lot of followers as well. But yeah, the, yeah, you'd want mm-hmm. you'd want to be a serious, serious loose end. Um, no, Gavin, you, look, you probably do with a good point. And I know twenty twenty one was it. We got to the final against Westmead in the Total Cup, or sorry, twenty twenty two even. Um, you know that was the that Westmead team, very good Westmead team. We know about the power and strength of some of their players, very talented footballers. That probably was the chance to win it that day. But again, it's that Crow Park hoodoo of Cavan just failing to deliver what it matters most. Um, inside the walls of Crow Park, and then I suppose the game against Down last year with the knocks out in Brefty Park. You see, but look at you'd like to think there's a bit of renewed confidence. Um. There's a bit of renewed uh, renewed confidence with these lads under range. So hopefully, you know, you could be looking at a Total Cup this year, fingers crossed. But um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. There we go. There we go. Uh, Daniel says, Cavan have had some brilliant underage teams over the year. I nearly think that they could, uh, that they really could have had lots more success in the past if the if the young lads yeah. stayed about. Yeah, but like, yeah, I've, I've been saying this, and I think I said this to you before, Aaron. We just didn't. Like, we had them for under twenty one under Ulster titles a couple of years ago. I was from eleven to fourteen, and unfortunately, whatever between this and between that, I've had this discussion with many Cavan people in the podcast before. Whatever 
happened, I suppose, them players or them kind of players dropping away or just la- losing interest or going traveling or seeing the county games too much equipment. I don't know. It's hard to know. Did we really cash in with that success that we had? I know the old twi- title 2020, but I suppose it probably a lot of people say probably a lot of luck involved with that particular title. But it's kind of we just that team. Yeah, it, it 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 probably bears belief, and that's what a lot of people always say to me. God, John, what about them four Ulster titles? Ulster, under twenty one titles he did win, but we just didn't catch in with them. Lads stepped away. Lads just could probably lost interest, and they were very very good teams. Um, but just just something something missing when it comes to Calvin with that. It's 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 a hard question for people. A lot of people answer. It's probably an uncomfortable question people for people answer, but something has to give. Yeah, for any fan TV who says Monaghan haven't won an All Ireland yet officially, the Arsenal of the top teams can never get over the line in the. Uh, in, in the You'll be waiting another while. You'll be waiting another while. Like yourself, a little bit, bit harsh on your on, on your own county there. I think um, you know, considering Monaghan's such a small county with limited resources, whereas Arsenal are a you know massive football and institution um so i probably wouldn't agree with the monaghan side of it but the arsenal side of it yeah i can i can get going that in fairness. Yeah. there we go before we finish up then yeah. surprise package for for next year and your or for this year actually it is now and your and your all Ireland winner for for this year the bit the big one Oh Lord, Aaron! Christ bless and save it. It's the first of fourth of January. Why are you doing this to me? Surprise package to Mr. Prendergast. I will go with surprise package. There is a fantastic question. Uh, let me see surprise package. God, who are we talking about? There, it's so early on. Could we say surprise package potentially being Donegal under Jim McGuinness? Is that a surprise package? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, yeah, yeah. So I suppose it would be. Like, I think if yeah. Donegal got to a semi final. Mm. Or a final, I think that'd be a mm. surprise. I don't know if it'd be that big of a surprise if they got to a quarter final. Yeah. Well, considering yeah. they haven't got to a semi final since 2014. Uh huh. You know, uh-huh. I, I think. But but then again, some I suppose it's just it's all about your own. It's all about people's perception. Some people might think a quarter final is a surprise. Some people might not. So yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and then like I suppose would it be surprise? It's hard to know. Like with Derry, Derry potentially winning all Ireland, would that be a surprise for people? So. You know, I think Derry, Derry are in for a big season. I think Mickey Hart's not there for the good of his health. I think he 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 can he can smell something with that Derry team. And geez, when they're full picked, they gave him with Shane McGuigan and Chrissy McKay came on last night. My God, McGuigan, he kind of lit, lit the place up, and he was only on for about ten or fifteen minutes. Derry could really go far, but Donny Gall maybe as the surprise package. Um, oh, see, Farney Arbor saying awfully. You wouldn't know. We'll have to wait and see. Um. All Ireland winners, Aaron, you're going to love me for this. The Mighty Dubs. I see Jack McCaffrey literally saying the other day he hates the gym, he hates this, and he hates the routine of it and bits of odds like that. But I think yous are going to win Sam this year, my man. There we go. Yeah, it's looking like there's going to be, I suppose, all the talk about retirements and it's looking like there's going to be none. And I'm hearing mm-hmm. Clemson's going to be coming back for, for, the, for the championship as well. So apparently all, yeah. the, all the lads are coming back for Simons, McCarthy. Um, so it's look. I think the motivation is to go for the tenth. Ten all Ireland. Ten all I think that's what I think that's what it is. But mm. Mm. yeah, ten all Ireland. I know, like unbelievable. Mickey Graham will win the All Ireland with Leitrim, of course. Well, we'll wait and see. My God, imagine Jesus wouldn't see Mickey for about two years if that happened. Uh, but yeah, no, I think I think Dublin probably. W- I think they will win the All Ireland. I think. The impact that Stephen Cluxon had in that team in such a short period of time, just coming back, the man's what 41, 42 years of age. Like any day of Jack McCaffrey about the place, like Paul Mannion, like all these boys, James McCarthy, James McCarthy's you know, committed for another year. I, I know. And first, I, I seen uh, Dean Rock's interview with Off the Ball after the All Iron final. He said he like, looked like he was going to pack it in, and the fact is Dean yeah. Rock. So I know, to be honest with you, I think Dublin will win the, <laughs> win the 50 million All Ireland. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, we'll, we'll see most certainly when it comes around. You wouldn't fancy Kerry, Mayo, Galway? Uh, well, David Clifford, it, it really boils down to David Clifford. Like, if Clifford was to get injured for Kerry, like, I think that'll be their chances mm-hmm. really spoiled. Galway, I think Galway, if any Galway fans are watching, I think Galway will be in for a big year this year. I just get this feeling Galway 
I think Shane Walsh looks like he's got the bit between his teeth again. He looks really interested. He's up. We'll see him this weekend for Kilmacook Croaks. I think he'll have a he'll have a big game this weekend. We'll they'll need to have a big game from this weekend. I think I think Galway's in for another good year. Um, I think they might, might win Connacht if I was even to shout Connacht. Um, yeah, but I think Galway's in for another big year. Uh, but I think Dublin, Dublin. I think the will retain Sam. Jesus probably is the president for every other county in Ireland to hear that. But uh, Kerry. Of course, Curry, 100%. Any day of David Clifford about they will be 100% to the All Ireland semi final, chalk them down for it. But I just think the personnel that Dublin have in their dressing room, it's, it's hard to look by them. There we go. There we go. Uh, Farney Fan TV send <laughs> an all Ireland final. There we go. I would emigrate. I would get out of this country if that happened. My God. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear me. Yeah, Jesus. That'd be a bit like me running. Oh, well, no fear of that. Don't worry about that. Well, the one that Talton did. Did you go anywhere after that? <laughs> yeah, well, I was actually at that game to be fair because Dublin were playing Monaghan in the same game. Oh yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, there was plenty, plenty of Mead fans who were out celebrating. Now I didn't mind it to be fair because Dublin had qualified for an All Ireland. But if Dublin, if Dublin, if Dublin had lost oh. that game, oh yeah, there would have been uh, home time. Yeah, it definitely would have been. <laughs> you had to get the first bus, say nothing. <laughs> Irish goodbye, Aaron. I- Irish goodbye. Absolutely. Irish goodbye. Nip out the back door. Oh Lord. Oh, hundred percent. Well, that's what I'm saying. And that's how intense. Like I would I would say, like modern people and that Farney fan TV, no doubt you're doing fantastic work work and modern people are the loveliest people. But my God, when it comes to football, yeah, it's it's different mm-hmm. gravy. It's different gravy. But yeah, they'd be the shouts, like that they would be the shouts. I just think that's where Dublin's limit is. There's like my God, they're just yeah, I can see it happening. I can you you'll be a happy man in July again, Aaron, I think. Hopefully so. Hopefully so. Yeah. Look, listen. The, the All Ireland win this year was was up there with the 2011 All Ireland win, no doubt. And mm-hmm. if we can go and do it again, that would be yeah, uh, uh, be, uh, be absolutely special. Make no doubt about that. You will. Well, John, I appreciate you jumping on. Appreciate anyone uh, tuning into the stream. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, uh, leave a rating on Spotify, Apple Podcasts if you could. And uh, John, your your own show, uh, the J Mac Podcast. I'm sure you'll be getting things back up and running soon. Oh, where yeah. can looking uh, forward to it. Where can people find it and uh, and everything else? A hundred percent, my man. Uh, on YouTube, uh, the J Mac Podcast. Uh, on Twitter, uh, at the J Mac Podcast, and of course on Facebook, the J Mac Podcast. I'd absolutely love to hear from you. Of course, of Aaron. Fingers crossed. Haven't asked him yet. Hopefully, as a pundit this year. Uh, I, I, Aaron's obviously been an unbelievable help uh, on the podcast. Um, I could better get the laxatives in the bottle. My God. <laughs> <laughs> there we go uh, Aaron's been an unbelievable help so hopefully he can come on board and looking forward to getting my pundits sorted now for the next couple of weeks and seeing if the lads are, can stay post and really looking forward to cracking into the year the county bubble's back Aaron delighted to have it back and I'd love to hear from anybody if they want to get in touch on Facebook uh, the JMAC Podcast Twitter at the JMAC Podcast and where else to say a YouTube JMAC Podcast before we go Aaron um I'd really uh, like to send all my condolences to the Haynes family, uh, young Tyler Haynes. Uh, unfortunately, um, um, oh God, it's 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 tough even saying it. The poor fella, um, he he died during Christmas. He was sixteen years of age. Uh, he was a neighbour of mine. He was a remarkable, remarkable lad. He was he was on the Calvin Miners uh, this year. He was he was absolutely flying at life. Uh, nothing nothing was an issue for him. He was. Oh, the, the funeral was 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 tough. A uh, tough going there last week. He was just a sensational talent. We obviously seen the the outpour of emotion for the for for the young fella. Um, my God, I, I used to be playing football with him on the estate. All hours you could be kicking football with him for three to four hours. He was just a sensational young man. And um, I suppose the big message, and I've said this in my podcast, your podcast, a few times. If times are tough, if things are up against. If you're up against stuff reach out, talk to family members, talk to teammates, mm-hmm. talk to workmates, get the help you need, go to the counsellor, just do whatever you need to do because life is so precious and uh, Tyler Hayden's God be good to you because you were just a sensational young man and just sorry Aaron, but he just had to say that. <clears throat> no, absolutely, absolutely. I remember seeing seeing the news about that. It was definitely, yeah, it was it, it was heartbreaking to see that. I know you were pretty pretty close to the to the family and everything else and as you said I'd, I'd like to echo my condolences as well and if anyone you know if anyone is ever going through tough times or difficult times or anything like that look listen we all we all have moments where you know we go through tough periods and everything else so my dms are open i'm sure john's are as well like feel free to, to reach out you know like because it's it's always better to speak about these things and, mm-hmm. and bottle them in you know 
on 100 percent aren't well said and yeah like it just it's it's shock it's over i suppose it really splits a community it's it splits a family but i suppose the haynes family no doubt to be getting unbelievable support from i suppose clubs teammates absolutely anyone so um mm. a problem a problem a problem shared is a problem halved and you know it's really time for i know in fairness tyler was getting all the help in the world but just you know help people you know, it just it's so important just to be honest about where you are at life. And if I said if things are struggling, like I don't know, obviously me and you, Aaron, we're probably at good ages now. We can we probably have a good sense of the world at this stage. And when you're 16, like called when I was 16, all the worries I had was football and school, and that was basically it and going yeah, to a disco. Yeah. But it's um it's a different sort of generation now. But I I just think life can always improve, life will always get better. So you know, just don't just don't leave it at that. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, yeah, no, I, I think I, I echo that message very, very clear. Well, thanks very much to anyone who uh, who, who definitely tuned in. Uh, as I said, hit the like button, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll catch, we'll catch you all soon.